So in this presentation, I'm going to talk you through the lean principles. So there are five lean principles. The first one is specify value. Now value can only be defined by the customer. So if you're going to measure that, you're going to have to talk or survey or somehow capture customer data. After you understand what customers value, the second lean principle is identify the value stream. This is the core set of actions required to produce a product or a service step by step by step. The third lean principle is flow. This is the method of aligning all those individual steps to facilitate the critical path between them. After we make value flow, so all those steps in the value stream are delivered one after the other without disturbance, we then let the customer pull, which means we only produce at the drumbeat of the need when the customer demands. And finally, we have pursue perfection. We develop and amend the process continuously in pursuit of perfection. We relook at value, we identify the value stream, we make value flow, we let the customer pull, and then we look again and again and try and make the process better. To ensure full value appreciation, we've got to eliminate a lot of waste from the existing process. And that's not about cutting material faster or making people spread butter more quickly in, in a sandwich shop. We actually sp specify waste into three different categories. The first is value adding waste. Those are wastes which create value as perceived by the customer. It's quite an odd category, but things like brainstorming, you generate a lot of possibles to get the one idea you want. Potentially all those ones you throw away are waste, but actually they've helped you get somewhere, so it's useful to do. Type one muda, muda is a Japanese word for waste, are those which things which create no value but are currently required. Uh, you can imagine if you've got a very large machine that's in the wrong place, it would be more efficient if it was moved. Uh, then ideally you'd move it, but it's very expensive to move, so you've got to do that. Things like passports when you fly somewhere, well, it's pretty wasteful of your time, but there's a security issue in having a passport going through passport control. Then there's type 2 Muda. Those are the actions that don't create customer value and you can just get rid of them immediately. So we can all think of business processes such as expenses when you claim expenses. Uh, often you need two or three different signatures before and after you travel, your own signature, your boss's signature, and then it's given to somebody else. This is often just wasteful activity. Implementing Lean is not about simply attacking the low-hanging fruit. It's not all about this type 2 muda. It's about a long-term change in attitude from the entire company and really planning and going out of type 1 muda. So there are seven common wastes which you can see. They were identified by Teichi Ono. Uh, you can read his book uh, or you can look some of the thinking that came out of this from Lean Thinking by Michael Jones. Uh, the first one he identified was unnecessary transport of materials. Then there's waiting for the next processing stage. Unnecessary movement of people. Overproducing things ahead of demand. Having inventories or stocks more than the absolute minimum. Producing things that don't actually work and overproducing stuff, often due to poor design. In many cases, we can see in the literature or in practice, people have added additional wastes to, the, to this original seven, making often eight or nine, such as poor use of human resource. That was an eighth waste used by SMMT. But I would argue often the poor use would fit into many of these others. So there are lots of different tools you can use in Lean. Uh, one of the most common ones you'll likely to hear about is the five C's or five S's. Now that's something that's evident when you look at the pit lane, if you're into Formula One. Uh, it denotes five S is sort, segregate, shine, strength and standards, or five C's is clear out, configure, clean and check, conform and customer practice. What that's about is standardized work, setting your sequence of operations, external work identified, that is the jobs you can do before you stop the process. So in our pit stop example, that is, getting the tires and all the machinery ready before you stop the car. 
the internal work is minimized so if you think about you changing the tires you used to fill a car with petrol you might adjust a wing but all the tools and everything is done so you're doing that in seconds and they've even redesigned so you've got a single wheel nut uh, using visual signals when finished so if you look again look at this process it's all done by hand signals there's no clever computers and it's all done set quality of practice so this is uh, Malaysia 2008 and that's Kimi Raikkonen during a pit stop so the five C's approach can be applied in all areas of business and here's a little simulation imagine files on a, on a computer difficult to find uh, I don't know how good your computer filing system is, but imagine if you were away and somebody had to look at your desktop PC or your laptop and try and find a file. Uh, but let's simulate this problem. So, here's a set of numbers in numerical order, starting with 1. Circle all the numbers from 1 to 49. So let's clear the numbers away that you don't need. If you were to then try and circle all the numbers again from 1 to 49, you'd find it's a lot quicker a job. Still searching around, look, there's one. One's here. Here's two. Where's three? Yeah, there's three. Now here's configuration. Now what we can notice here is actually one's in this quadrant, two's in this quadrant, three's in this quadrant, four is here, five is here, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. What you'll see is there is actually a hidden process. And often in business, there's a very good reason or, or there's often a, a natural development for any process. So you'll find this hidden uh, configuration behind what looks a chaotic uh, set of numbers. However, if we take it one more step, going to conformity, and if you were to try and circle all these numbers, you'd see a marked improvement. You can really zip across very, very fast. But let's go back. If you hadn't done this job, if you hadn't moved to conformity, and we took two numbers away, which are they? Incredibly difficult to spot in any reasonable length of time. If we go back to conformity, the missing numbers immediately become obvious. There we are, 18 and 41. 